All right, welcome back everyone. My name is Jax. Today I'm gonna showcase uh, something that I updated today. Um, if you guys remember when I did my um, TypeScript uh, playlist, there was a video, I don't remember if it was part three, I think it was part three. And uh, I basically did, um, I basically showed a way to do a config with uh jason and it worked it worked like it wasn't bad but it, it was it was all right and i personally did not like that in that way even though that it did work so this past couple of days i've been i actually figured out a better way to do the config and i updated the boilerplate too so the link will be in the description this video I am just showing how to install that. So um, if we take a look at what I have here, this is uh, GitHub, and this is my GitHub, link in the description. And uh, we're just gonna download from the main. We're gonna download zip, it'll say four because I've been doing this a bunch, uh, testing and stuff. So double click that, I'm gonna move this over. If you have Windows 11, you can open a new tab, but if you have Windows 10, then oh well. Um, go to your 5M like server resources and I'm gonna delete this and um, All you have to do is take the folder in the zip and put it in the resources folder to like install the script and Then once you have that in the resources, we can re rename it anything um, we can name it Jack's script and then you'll see a bunch of files in here, but uh, v this VS code folder that I have in the settings JSON file it actually gets rid of a lot of the files when you're actually in the text editor. So if I right click and I do open with code, where you just open the folder with code, you can see that there aren't as many files as there are right here. Uh, I did this because um, for me personally, I like don't really like a lot of files in my edit my code editor, and it, it's just distracting to me when I code. So I took, I took a, you know, I just decided to hide them in the code editor and it works. So I said, okay, um, I'll close out of this. Let's go over the readme real quick. Uh, so for this part right here, um, you don't always have to do this. And I kind of put this as like a note right here. You don't always need to put it, but if you have issues with, calling native functions like get player id or you know get player pet or something like that then you would probably want to add this at the top um for either your client file or your server file um but if you don't add it and you're not having any issues you don't need to add it because sometimes i don't add it and i don't have any issues so i just move on um another thing is right here is npm i so you do need node.js um, and Node.js, you just download it, and and I you can literally just watch my TypeScript video, and it shows you how to download Node.js. I think that's just like part one or something. So I'll put that in the description as well for those interested. Um, let's go ahead and go to this space on the left. Right-click, open an integrated terminal. Uh, this black box will appear. We're going to run npmi. It'll install all the packages do its thing it's taking an extra second for me but it should be pretty quick there isn't a lot of packages okay the next thing that we want to do is npm run build and this will build your uh your project so it'll take it'll compile typescript uh code into javascript so that way it can communicate to 5m and become a resource um, if you don't want to type npm run build all the time when you're ready to build, uh, you can do npm run watch. And so now, every time I save a file, it'll build that file. Um, and so that's kind of that's kind of useful. So you can do watch and you can close the terminal and just start coding. Um, the last command I want to go over is npm run dev. So what I did was... Uh, I installed the a JavaScript obfuscator, and what that does is um, it like really scrambles up your code. 
but in a good way, in a in a way that makes uh, uh, like script kitties and whatever. Um, it makes it harder on them to kind of reverse engineer your code to get it like uncompiled or unobfuscated or something, decrypted. Uh, it's not the right word, but it's relatable to that. Um, but it just makes it harder for for them to kind of get your actual co uh, code um, from the script. So if we did npm run dev, I'll show you. It builds into the resource folder. So that's the folder that you're obviously going to, you know, put on GitHub or you would probably, this would be mostly used for like, if you were to sell your script, um, you would obfuscate it. Uh, so that way people don't um, do whatever with it. Uh, this is what I'm talking about, by the way. So it really messes up, makes it very hard to do anything, basically. You get some idea, like emit net, you're triggering an event, and something's happening, but you cannot really... I, I can't even understand that. Um, but yeah, so... And, and if you want this back to, like, the regular code, all you do is npm run build, and then it comes... Yeah, it comes back. So you can kind of, like, look at the JavaScript and be like, just verify that it's, you know, going to JavaScript, and then you can do uh, npm run dev. Um, by default, the code that I have is really just like, it's just basic stuff. Um, it shows you, obviously I have the client types just, just in case it has issues. Um, it kind of shows you how to make an event. So this is how you make a client event. Um, that's like a global client event to be able to be triggered on server side. So, you know, on net allows server side to be triggered uh to trigger client side events and then without the net part it's just on that would be a client only event where only the client side can trigger that event um it is a little it's not really like that hard to understand to be honest um but yeah so on this same thing register command and then i show like source number you kind of need that um for this right here uh if you wanted to do like a development config file or if you wanted to do like a shared file, I just added like a shared folder in a file right here. I didn't really know what else to put other than like a quote unquote config, but I already have a config file right here, which is actually the next thing that I want to talk about because that's the the biggest thing about this update is uh, the config file. So before, like I mentioned, you do all this random stuff with load resource file and then you have all these interfaces yeah you don't need that anymore um i mean you still kind of need the type checking in terms of this file config.d.ts so you know greeting is a string max players is a number jack stanger is any and you put these question marks in there uh to you know if if not if it's not used or something like that which it, um, i mean honestly it should be but if it's not really like used much and you don't really need to add it or you can comment it out or something like that, then you can put a question mark right here and TypeScript, uh, TypeScript knows that if it has a question mark, then it's like optional. Um, but you can remove the question marks if you don't want people removing your whatever. Uh, but this is like kind of what I set up. Greeting, hi from your mom's house, 64 players, Jack Stanger, my mom is hot. That's pretty much it and then since this and this talk to each other and so it kind of just knows what's going on then config is global to the typescript so like i can go right here and we can do instead of shared i can do i can do or honestly, I could just remove this if I don't want to use shared anymore. And I could do like, let's say, um, let's say I wanted to print like uh, Jack Stager help or something. I would do, let's put this over here. I would do something like console log config, because it already knows what config is. And then see how it says Jack Stager question mark reading max players question marks so it kind of already knows so that verifies that it knows the config file and then we can do uh jack stanger and then help 
And then if I um, if I build, npm build, and I go to my console, and I do refresh, ensure, because I didn't start the script yet, so checks, script. It'll take it'll take a second when you first um, when you first start the script. It'll it'll have all this mumbo jumbo of yarn es build all this mumbo jumbo. But um, once you start the script again or even restart the server, it won't do that anymore. So that's like a one time thing just to tell five m hey this is like loaded in JavaScript. So you have to you know get all the packages and make sure everything talks to each other correctly before you load the script and make sure nothing goes wrong. And then and then once 5M says okay, then the you know, script loads. Um, what we can do is, oh, this is in an event. I didn't even realize. Uh, let's do that. So if we restart the script again, you'll see it says Jax, your mom is hot. And then if I did, let's say if I changed this to like, I don't know, sup or something. I don't have to rebuild. That's the thing. I don't have to rebuild. There you go. Jax is sup. Danger is hot. So that's really the main thing I wanted to cover in this video. It's just the config. Everything else is really the same. Um, I mean, obviously, you don't see a lot of the TS config files anymore. And the boilerplate, at least when looking at it, when actually using it in the Visual Studio editor, um, you're you don't see a lot of the files which is really good at least for me that's really good if you for some reason want to see these files which is fine you will go into vs code uh folder at the top and then the settings.json and then you change anything that's any whatever file you want you change the true to false like let's say the package like let's say I needed it to verify a package is installed or I want to view all the packages. There you go, you have all my packages that I installed. So, or if you want to change anything, if you want to change the build, um, so that's really it. Uh, same thing with like the build file. Like if you want to see how I'm building everything, this is how I'm doing it. And you can kind of explore and do whatever. Um, that's pretty much it for this video. I'm pretty much, I'm pretty much wrapping up here. So if you guys do use this, uh, feel free to uh, you know just download it, use it. Um, if you if you do use it, uh, I would appreciate it if uh, you guys starred my GitHub. Um, that would be that would be nice because I think I think starring GitHub repositories is like a common thing to do in GitHub. So that would be nice if you guys uh, starred my GitHub. And then also I want to I want to. Re <laughs> <laughs> remind you guys that this doesn't have react into it i will have to add that later and i will do that um but for now this is the typescript boilerplate if you have a react project and you want to use the typescript boilerplate with the react just put this into like a folder and then put it into that script and then you should be fine um but thank you all for watching uh i know this is kind of like a random video not super random but Hopefully this is helpful uh, for those who use TypeScript in their uh, their script or TypeScript in their resource. Um, but yeah, so um, thank you all for watching. And uh, this is also my first video of face cam. So yeah, um, thank you all for watching. Like and subscribe. And uh, I'll, I'll, I'll uh, see you guys in the next one, I guess.